came all the way from New Jersey. Thank you so much. He is a professor of computer science with expertise in optimization theory and algorithms. And what's really fascinating is that he actually has a book called The Best Writing. It was actually selected in the best writing on mathematics this past year. And he has a U.S. patent for what he's about to share, the polio demography. So please give a hand of applause for Bob. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, mathematics is a subject that is openly hated in this country. <laughs> American international stand standings continue to decline. 15 year olds in math tests have ranked as low as 29th. On the other hand, computer science has its own issues in K-12 education. For instance, quoting code.org, roughly 90% of schools don't teach it. And this is essential that computer science is going to be taught in K-12. It also hurts our economy. President Obama, too, believes that we need to have more girls interested in STEM, math, science, engineering. Half of the population is underrepresented. So solving for the unknown is the foundation of math, art, science, and discoveries that have brought the civilization to where we are today. Uh, Solving for x in a polynomial equation is my moonshot, and its visualization called polynomiography. Polynomiography. Uh, it's a combination of polynomial and the suffix graphy. You can say it, ask any five-year-old. They will say, be able to say it. It's a visualization medium based on solving for x. While the technology is sophisticated, like a camera operating the polynomiography software is very easy. You input dots, you input text, you input a polynomial, and the software gives you a polynomial graph. Polynomiography turns the historic problem of solving for x upside down into a game of hide and seek with a bunch of dots on a painting canvas, metaphorically speaking. It's a medium to invent, to innovate, to discover, to play, to create, to teach fundamentals of mathematics, to teach algorithms, and to make STEM attractive, all based on solving the problem of solving for, the, for X. It's a US patented technology. That's my own polynomiography. Uh, it's featured in media. It's praised by experts, science news, by academicians. And also by a youth, 14-year-old girl who says, I love polynomiography. A nine-year-old boy at Rutgers Day who said, I didn't know math could make such a beautiful images. Numbers are among the most significant of inventions, really, if you think of it. Polynomials are even more important than numbers. They are the alphabet of STEM. They model the world and approximate life and motion. Solving a polynomial equation is a fundamental skill. Yet, middle and high schools, they only teach linear and quadratic, how to solve that. And students hardly appreciate solving it because, to be honest, they teach it in a very old-fashioned way. What if polynomiography can make math so beautiful that to hate it would be to hate art? Solving equations would become cool. What if polynomials become mundane and kids will have played with them? What if polynomiography attracted girls to STEM? What if it inspired computer science and coding? What if it led to visual cryptography, it entered art, design, and fashion? What if it would inspire the discovery of totally new applications of polynomials altogether? For instance, in Rutgers, I teach a course, and my students are very inventive. Ecology, neuroscience, art, music. This is a radical solution, making math beautiful through polynomiography can be achieved at many levels. These are in Japan, Korea, New Jersey. Kids, youth, and students, teachers, artists, and the general public can appreciate it. It can be used in formal and informal teaching. It can also be used in special education, say, teaching autistic children. I don't have time to talk about it now, but I can mention it later. Thousands of creative modules can be developed based on students and teachers themselves to visualize mathematical concepts or other concepts. And um, you may ask, what makes it different? 
There has never been a medium like polynomiography before. It's not a fractal software, although some of the images are fractal. It, in fact, you can teach fractals in K-12 education using polynomiography. There is an element of control. There is a foundation, a polynomial equations. You know, high school students, middle school students know what polynomials are. Mysteries and dots and numbers can be turned into, into objects. This allows the youth to quickly establish a friendly connection and appreciate the mathematics behind it. Every middle and high school student knows how to solve the quadratic equation, and it's probably uninteresting to them. But here is a polynomial graph of x squared minus 2 equal to 0 on the cover of computer graphics. So they see it differently. And quickly, they go to polynomials of much higher degree, 5, 10, 50, 100. They can break the boundaries, therefore. They visually discover significant mathematical concepts, like the fundamental theorem of algebra, like complex numbers. They start asking deep questions. How do you make these images? So they learn the algorithms behind, behind the images. They learn some easy math, difficult math, and complicated concepts. Polynomiography also inspires teachers and uh, mathematicians, scientists. Polynomials are not just abstract objects anymore. Uh, how will it impact? It's a new source of inspiration. It's a new source of education, technology that can impact the entire world. It appeals to girls and boys, to children. It teaches math, algorithms. It makes people to think logically, creatively, and so on. Educational aspect of it is not the only aspect. It has the potential to, in encryption, computer graphics, animation, art and design, architecture, facial recognition, Polynomiography is forever, as long as there are polynomials. An industry can be based on it. For instance, educational software at a variety of levels. I have a software, and it's been tested at a prototype. Software for babies and kids. These are polynomiographs. Ms. Polly is ready to teach kids. Polynomiography may become very popular. This guy is ZT, not what you thought. Art can be based on that, serious art. Apps and games, apps to make possible communication via images. You can say, I love you, a girl can send to a boy. Apps to turn each Sudoku solutions into a polynomiograph. These are possible. There are these many polynomiographs. In a way, polynomiography could be a new, also a Rubik cube, can be brought to masses. This could be the entry. Thank you very much. A word is worth a thousand pictures. This is thank you in the language of polynomiography. Thank you very much. Seems really cool. Um, what's the first application you'll try? The first application, I would say, is education to make mathematics interesting. I, when an article was covered about polynomiography that appeared in Star Ledger, New Jersey newspaper, a, a girl wrote to me and said, Mr. Kalantari, I like polynomiography. What are polynomials? I thought, what a beautiful question. You make them interested in something that they wouldn't otherwise care for. And you know, in high school, we teach them quadratic, linear, and then they go and take calculus, talk about general degree polynomials. Here, they get introduced to it. So I think. I mean, I'm an educator and a professor. I accidentally got interested into polynomiography. Uh, I feel that education is one of the major applications of it. It really breaks the boundaries of math and feeling good. You know, it's like they become tangible objects that you can play with. Honestly, when I, I've been teaching this and presenting it to high school or middle school, uh, and I, when I teach it at Rutgers, uh, these courses, if they call it first year seminars or something, I learned from the students. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, gee, they use it in, in dance. I had a student who was inspired, created dance, or neuroscience. You know, I, I, uh, I end up learning from them. Mm -hmm. So I think it can really inspire. I mean, some of those things that I said are. How are early not... in the education process can this be introduced? How early, like four years, 10 years? Uh, when the child is four years or 10 years? I mean, I'm asking uh, in terms of how early it can be introduced in the system. I believe, I mean, um, if you understood your question, I believe that there is interest mm -hmm. f 
from the students, from the teachers. Unfortunately, the educators, people who write the curricula, they feel that, they, you know, like they ask me sometimes, I've met them and they say, what kind of properties of polynomials can you teach them? They want to package what you can teach them. And I don't believe in that. I think you should let them discover things on their own. They will realize things like fundamental theorem of algebra, fundamental theorem of algebra, proved by Gauss, becomes a piece of cake. You know, they discover it on their own. So I think there is potential. Some teachers are trying it already, but it's not at the rate that I thought it would, it would span. However, it's been moving. You know, every now and then I get an email about a teacher who wants to use something, you know. Uh, and I don't have it. I, I have been uh, making a demo of my software uh, available to students. And the software is a homemade software. It's not, you know, a totally, uh, say, professional level. But I think it has a potential to spread truly, even in, in elementary education. Thank you. Thanks. So your comments about educators kind of gets at my next question. I know this is the era of standardized tests. I'm sure anyone who has younger siblings or has children knows that they're constantly preparing for the next standardized test. So have you brought this to the attention of policymakers or the attention of book publishers? I know there's a couple major curriculums that are now being geared for these standardized yeah, tests. I feel I mean, like that would be a great know, way to get their entry into the it's curriculum. It's a good question. I, have, I am a professor. So I have to do my teaching and my, you know, mm -hmm. I have come in contact with educators. I continue to, to do this. And I must say there is a limit. I see some walls between me and educators who do the education. And uh, some of the, my friends, mathematician friends, they have told me, Bauman, what kind of a name is this, polynomiography? <laughs> so uh, I said, well, it makes sense. And when I go to middle schools in US and I tell them, can you pronounce polynomiography? They look at it, and this guy's with his thick English accent, he's challenging us. Of course we can say polynomiography. It makes sense to them. And uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but they, it is possible. I mean, I have talked with some high level educators, people who write the curricula, and they are thinking, well, okay, this needs to be tested. For instance, in Massachusetts, there are some schools, Groton is a professor there I know who is using it. You know, and, he, and he's very impressed with it. But so they are going to be testing it. We are writing a module that can be placed online at DIMAX mm -hmm. uh, Rutgers Center. And uh, eventually it may be picked up you know, by some, some teachers. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, I have been to Japan and uh, Korea more than once. And uh, they are interested also. Uh, and they are ranked very high. Uh, and I think that we in the U.S. can also uh, explore it. Great, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm coming too close. My, hear my hearing is not very good. That's right, I'll talk louder. Um, every moonshot has an assumption baked in, right? We should go to the moon. Yes. And you started with your statements about science and technology education. Yes. I mean, that's kind of, I'm not going to want to call it an assumption, but... Why is it that, um, I guess I'm kind of challenging this idea that people need to be more literate in science and education than they already are. I mean, not everybody needs to be an engineer, right? No. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of uh, faith that we need more, everybody should code, but do they really? I think historically, you know, uh, people asked what is a number, and then they started going to fractions, and then they asked what kind of a number is square root of two, hypotenuse of a right triangle. That brought us to irrational numbers, you know, whole new discoveries. How do you approximate the square root of two? You need algorithms, Newton's method, and so on. So I really see solving for x, how do you do it, as the source of everything. I mean, numbers, that's why I feel strongly that the concept of numbers, the invention of numbers, is the biggest invention we've had. So I believe that that it can create source of, source of uh, you know, uh, new things. New things can emerge. Designs. Uh, uh, students, uh, as I mentioned, they can, you know, they think of why not use it in cryptography? Why not use it in, in you know, uh, credit card number can be an image, and so on. So, 
I don't know. This is the extent that I can.